right, here we are, Lauren. Thank you so much for joining me. It's my pleasure. What has been happening on your end of the world? Oh my God, I was in Las Vegas. I actually got to work with a band that if I named the name, I'd get in trouble, but everybody knows them. Oh. Uh, like worldwide. And then I did that for three days and then um, that was pretty impressive, right? So that was fun and interesting. And then other than that, I had a great weekend. Great, what kind of work did you do with them? I kind of want to try to guess who it is, but I won't. Uh, they were a bunch, you know, there are a bunch of guys mm -hmm. who have been together for at least 10 years on the rise. And um, if you go, do they know how to communicate all their issues ever? Answer is no. Mm -hmm. And in about 10 years, most people get divorced. <laughs> like if they don't know how to communicate and they don't know how to deal, you know, any couple, anyone, right? And so we got flown in, my sister and I got flown in to see if we can do basically a Hail Mary and fix the relationship. And they gave us three days. And you'll be happy to know that we did it. Wow. We did it. And it was so funny because if you really understood all their issues, you would find out that they were much bigger because no one had talked about them for the year. <laughs> and I'm like, this is all you got? Right? You know, it was not, you know, you slept with my wife, right? It wasn't anything that would kill people. But that doesn't mean it don't kill people, right? And three days. I mean, well done. That's awesome. Yes, thank God. I mean, it really, you know, there's a lot you can talk about and get resolved, really, mm -hmm. where if you've never talked about stuff and then you're only talking about it, mm -hmm. it really cathartically moves through you. It reminds me of the Metallica documentary, Some Kind of Monster. Have you watched that? I have never seen it, but that is exactly what everyone says. Right. I'm like, right. Maybe if I like Metallica better, I think I would watch it. But at some point I'm going to, I think yeah, it's true. It's pretty impressive. But yeah. focusing on you, I love your book. Maybe it's you. Cut the crap, face your fears, love your life. I love your languaging. I love what it's all about. And it's really, it's my kind of languaging. I think I've heard you speak about your process of, evolving the way you communicate it and getting more real. And I love that. The authenticity just oozes from it and the accessibility, the, the, the humanness behind it. Really beautiful. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. That was, you know, the, the most important thing is I teach people, if they watch me, if they listen to me, if they read me, if they go through anything, what, they're, what, what I'm giving is basically permission for how to talk about stuff you never talk about. Mm -hmm. Like I'm excellent at languaging the unsaid, right? That's like, if it ain't in the unsaid, I'm not talking about it. Yeah, it's, so, it's such a strange trait that most of us would have, isn't it? Of lying and feeling embarrassed and feeling scared of what everyone thinks, yet I remember Ramdas doing this exercise and, and getting everyone to share their shit. And he's like, do you think there's any one shit that I haven't heard? Like, do you think your shit's really bigger than my shit and gnarlier and everyone's got their stuff and it's so funny how we think that our stuff is more unique than everyone else's stuff or dirtier or darker or... You know, it's what, you know, so we're conditional, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'll take my love away. I'll, I won't trust you anymore. I won't respect you anymore. I won't want to play with you anymore, right? So the amount we will take, play take away and be conditional creates a condition of like, why would anyone tell the truth into that condition? Because I want to please you. I, if I love you, I should not tell you anything that will upset you seems very logical, mm -hmm. right? And then the beginning of lying from the youngest of age seems like really plausible. It makes more sense than telling the truth because if you tell the truth, you're going to get in trouble, mm -hmm. right? So who would tell the truth if you're going to get in trouble? Yeah. I can relate right? to it. On the, uh, and so why would the trouble be worth it? Why yeah. would you rather get in trouble?
Right. And so, you know, the day I blew up my life, which was the day I went and told everyone all my truths, I was willing to blow up my life for the truth, for myself. Like I wasn't willing to stay in this postured reality anymore. Like I was, I was such a con because I loved people. Right. And I love my mom and dad and I loved everybody. And so therefore I lied. Right. I, I held people's secrets. I managed all the information and I had no idea that it stopped my intuition. It stopped me being present. It stopped me even knowing myself. Like I was locked into a personality that kept up appearances for everyone. And it never was able to question who did I want to be? What could I be? There was no creativity available because I had to manage everything I had already packaged from my past. So right. yes, please, please share of your journey of how, how you got that insight to start telling the truth. And then how did this methodology of yours begin to be developed into a very just potent method? How did it all begin for you? And please uh, share a little bit of the unfoldment. I would say it really was, I was an epically good liar who never got caught or in trouble for anything. It was pre-internet, which means you'd have to find me at home on a landline to, to make plans with me. What? Right? Which meant most people didn't know where anyone was at any time. Your parents, your boyfriend, right? Like you really needed to make plans and be at that location, right? I mean, I, it's almost a comedy to say that now, but one could understand yeah. that back in that day, right? No one knew anything or had to. And if they couldn't figure out what to ask you, they couldn't know. Mm -hmm. And um, so there got to be this point when I was like freshman in college, where I was, I was cold inside. And I really had an epiphany that the reason I was cold inside was because no one knew me, right? And it was the beginning of me being done lying for anyone. Like if I were gonna respect you, I wouldn't lie to you. And if I were gonna respect me, I wouldn't need to lie. And if I were doing anything that I had to lie about, I probably shouldn't do it. Or, you know, what, what's up with that, right? So I had a real come to Jesus with myself about that I was no longer willing to be a liar. And, that, and I was already quite a bitch of a renegade. Like I would not recommend what I did to anyone, but I pretty much two weeks later blew up everything. Like told my parents everything. And I mean, I was gross, right? Like you're like, what's the grossest thing you did? I was like, use my mother's vibrator. Does that come <laughs> on her bed? And if you're like, tell me about your parents. I'm like, Orthodox Jews. You're like, what's she doing with the vibrator? Let alone, like, like, so I blew open that it, that, I wasn't, I wasn't going to not be me anymore. Mm -hmm. And that, and then the day I, I can remember how I felt, I can remember in that same period of time telling a boyfriend I had cheated on him and getting a picture of beer over my head, like actually. And I was in my, I had a black cat suit on. I had this onesie. I can remember the onesie forever. because It was freezing in a taxi, damp seated. And I had never felt so free in all my life. Like I was, oh my God, I'm me. I like did it. Yeah, wow. Right. So then it felt so liberating. It felt so freeing. And I was Uber. never, I was never right. going. That was and, like the beginning uh -huh. of the real Lauren. Right. And you, were you already coach at that time? No. No. <laughs> Did that kind of begin the coaching journey or where did that all, okay. No, I was still an environmentalist, right. right, who hadn't done any, you know, with a cigarette hanging out of her mouth. Um, so that was the end of like the era of the two-faced, right? I was done being two-faced. I was going to be true to myself. I wasn't going to lie anymore. And I really lost, every, like I, there weren't that many people who stayed for this Lauren. <laughs> right thank god you can rebuild your life and make new friends <laughs> yeah. right? 
but I really thought that nothing I had kept was worth it. Mm -hmm. Right. It was such a, it was so, I, it, I was very proud to break up with my past mm -hmm. and also be known as whatever the hell they wanted to think of me. So that was that. And then I was still this environmentalist. And until I um, hated my first job out of college, which was my dream job, I had no idea I was in the wrong field. Right? I spent five years studying, got my degree, got my first job at the United Nations, thought I was the coolest, and felt like I was this big in a cubicle with a lot of paperwork. And I was like, this can't be my dream, right? Like, I don't even want to be my boss. I don't want to be his boss. Like, I'm in a lot of trouble. So that was my next round of needing an epiphany. So what happens in the method is I went through a whole stopped being an asshole kind of a human, really, right? I wasn't close with my family. I wasn't, I didn't have, I didn't have great friendships. I, I was not that impressive. And so I began the road to really loving myself, loving others and meaning it. Mm -hmm. And then I had to figure out my career, like what really was my dream. And that's when I began to shift from save the trees to save the people. Right. And if I needed this much change, so does everybody else likely. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was like an easy jump to the left. Yeah, it's quite remarkable how much energy we waste on the lying and the suppressing of our truths. And there's a common situation that I'm sure you're aware of, of when people are taking their last breaths, when they're going to die, when they're going to leave the body, and all of that suppressed lying, suppressed anxiety, whatever it may be, often, because there's no strength left, no not much ego left, all those lies get fucking leaked in those last moments on your deathbed. And that's not what I want. I want to be <laughs> telling people how much I love them, like for real and really like be conscious in those last moments. But it, apparently it's a pretty common phenomenon of like just leaking all those lies in that last moment to finally feel a moment of liberation then. Bye. Yeah, our 13th area. So we really have 13 areas of life. I only put 12 in the book. The 13th area is death. Mm -hmm. And I have taught courses and material, you know, to kind of like seniors or, you know, 60 and over mm -hmm. about how to live before you die and how to not do it, like how to truly, the person I actually can make the greatest case to for clean up your whole life is that human. Right. Because they're, they can smell what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, what yeah. are they managing it for? Like, people are dead and they're still managing the lies, right? And it keeps you stuck, right? Anything you lie about fixes you to that person who has to lie about that. And then it locks in your personality to be the person who would never offend, like the person who has to, right? So we lock our personalities in by the things we hide and keep secret about everything all the way to the point where I'm shocked when I, when I get a person to start to trail their inner dialogue in an area, they're unhappy. Like, okay, let's pick your body. Okay. We'll pick your mother. Okay. We'll pick your career, your husband, your kid. And when you ask them to just start trailing their inner dialogue, it is like, what do you mean an inner dialogue? Hmm. What inner dialogue? What? Like they can't even hear that something's conducting at all times. And that's, that's the part of the method is if you can't hear yourself, you can't change one goddamn thing you're saying. So what's right? the beginning step of beginning to hear the dialogue, see the dialogue, witness it? What's the beginning steps? How do you speak to that person? Okay, well, the, that, first thing, the first thing is I need to bait you. Right. No, I need to bait you. I'm a human, right? It bet, that, that Advil better have sugar coating. Right? <laughs> like something better be good to get me to do anything. So here's the bait. The bait is before I even start to get you to deal with your life, I ask you to dream and have a vision in every, in the 12 areas of your life. Yes, there's 13, but we're not going to worry about that yet. So and in an area uh, where it matters to you deeply, 
you want a family, you want a better relationship with your family, you want a better relationship to yourself, you want a better relationship to your body, right? You have a dream. The minute you have a dream, you, you then actually, once you're very clear you have a dream, you can hear the cockamamie shit you're saying to yourself that is anti the dream, mm -hmm. especially if you don't do it alone. Right. So when I built all my programs, one of the things I, the, a human can't do this alone because alone with yourself, you'll hit snooze. Mm -hmm. When you promise someone you were getting out of bed and you're dangerous to hit snooze, right? And you'll pay your kid five bucks if you hit snooze, right? Then all of a sudden you can hear your inner dialogue, hairy eyeball talking right. about how to hit snooze or lie to the kid so you don't have to pay the five bucks. Right. And it's amazing. It starts to just like, it just starts rolling. Mm -hmm. Right. So you need a dream and a promise to do something about it, to hear the voice in your head, be the antichrist. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it seems really important to keep people accountable to yeah. those promises are, are, are really potent. I hadn't really heard that piece of the puzzle before. I'd heard similar, similar notions, but the promise is huge and to, to vocalize it all and to share it. And a consequence. It's not even, and it needs to be a consequence coming after a vice. Yeah. Like it's so easy, right? It's, it's, it, you know, my joke is it's like if the toilet bowl rolls this way and you want to make it go the other way, right? You got to use the same dark side that wants to lay in bed, like, great, you get up an hour early if you don't do that meditation, <laughs> right? Like, and your kid knows who you're teaching integrity to. You won't even have the voice. You'll get your feet on the floor in a second. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's how I decode lower self from higher self. There isn't a lot of higher self language to our own selves. There's just not, mm -hmm. right? And so I want a human to develop their inner dialogue, like take over the inner dialogue by hearing it. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a lot of higher self chatting and we got a lot of lower self we can't hear. And so the combo of putting that little dance together, have a dream that really matters to you, have a promise, then you can hear your voice in your head being a shit about what you promised and pay the consequence so you stop feeling guilty. Right? I also, like we, we are waiting for feeling bad to ch change our lives. Right. Oh my God. I felt terrible. Right. Like, yeah, that is not a payment plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the victim story. No, we really did have a bad night because we didn't go out like we said we would. Mm -hmm. Therefore we ate the bag of chips and had two bourbons. Right. But we did not have fun. And I want you to know something you didn't. Right. So I would rather the person pay the piper, pay the consequence and have a good night. Like mm -hmm. I want to remove punishment and guilt and I want to put in consequences and then upping the ante to get you to do what you really wish you would do. Because we are fundamentally brats, chickens and weather reporters are my nicknames for the basic. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up. And there's a great part of your book where you write, ever notice how on a bad day you never serve a salad. I mean, how long do you think your bad mood would really last if you only fed your brat celery? How many <laughs> bad days would your brat tolerate if it no longer got rewarded a drink, a cigarette, or an entire Netflix series on the couch for it? Speak, can you please speak more about the brat? Because I think a lot of people can relate to that and then go into the chicken and the, uh, the weather reporter. Okay, so first of all, as you can tell from my original story, I am the original brat. Right. Right. And what I mean by brat is every way you feel entitled to, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll just eat one. I don't, any form of blow off anything you care about should be doing, even if it's as dumb as make your bed, right? Like it doesn't, as small, right? You, the constant, ugh, leave me alone. I'll do it tomorrow right? I, and a reason, right? Like I, I work so hard today, I can't work out. Right? Like I, I did this so well, I deserve two pieces. 
right? So we reward when we're suffering. We condone with like appease with something yum, like food, drink, like all of these things, right? Are acts of brat, right? And so the dark side runs on the brat mentality, which is it's another day tomorrow. You'll be better tomorrow. And the minute you go, I'll be better tomorrow, you could do what the hell you want to do today. Right? right? And, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I, I deserve a private life. I can keep that to myself. Secrets are not bad. I, I can, what? So we, the way we defend anything we do, we would never want anyone to do to us, is we keep it private. We sneak. And um, we say we'll be better tomorrow, right? It's the tantrum or four-year-old. And it works, right? And you really, they're, you're, they're like, one more cookie. And you give them a cookie and you go, you promise only one more cookie, one more cookie. And then they just as easily go, can I have one more? And you go, no. And they cannot remember the deal they just made. The brat. We all have a brat voice and mm -hmm. it's working all day long. All day long. It's waiting. So how do you deal? How do you deal with the? How do you deal with a brat client first, and then how do you deal with your inner brat? So my inner brat has long been screwed. Yeah. Right. It exercises. It eats right. It gets allotments of tobacco. Very strict. Um, it you know. What is all, it? Thirteen days you've allotted yourself, or something like that? No, it was thirteen. It's thirteen. Yeah. It's thirteen days, right? Um, and then every year I make a new contract, but, but we're, I'm lessening the contract because I'm turning 50. And so I decided, I mean, I'm negotiating. I mean, I swear to God, I'm heavily, my brat and my public like commitment to myself and living to about 102 are all negotiating how much tobacco you can have in a year. Right. And I have, my best friend is Mark, he Dr. Mark Hyman. Mm -hmm. And so he's in on, he's my, he's my board member. Okay. Right, so we're all, I'm all in on it. Huh? Right. That's great. So that's, I negotiate with what I call my cute little vicious dark side, mm -hmm. who I love, right? You integrate your dark side. I'm not telling anyone not to have moderation in your mm -hmm. own form, just nothing you would lie about. Mm -hmm. How you know you can do it is you wouldn't lie about it. Yeah. Right. You don't have to announce it, but mostly you would. So that's how I, so I always have a set of promises. They're always public. And I always have people holding them with consequences. I never get out of my own method. And I need it desperately. But over enough time, you, I really am into my exercise. Like, I'm into it, right? I'm, so, I'm at some point. It's like, my joke is it's like a catch-22. The day you would keep the promise forever because it makes you happy is pretty much the day you could stop having the promise. Yeah. But remember, you're human. Keep the promise. Don't, don't take the consequence out, ever. How about the chicken? What are classic tendencies of the chicken? So the chicken defends not telling people the truth and why not. Mm -hmm. It believes in not hurting people. It believes in you can lie about, okay, I'll get it, right? Like you'll do like anything like, okay, like the martyr lives under the chicken, all the ways we are good to others, but not telling the truth about what we think or feel. Mm -hmm. We pretend we're cool with shit, we're not, right? It's all the ways we don't confront things. This is the person who doesn't like confrontation is a chicken. Um, the person who actually is jealous and watches other people and thinks everyone's doing better and compares themselves to others tends to be a chicken on going after what they really want and they're right, they're watching what they think they can have and compare it in a comparison game. Um, so chickens just think they're the best strategists and they're always strategizing everything. Mm -hmm when to ask for a present, when to spend money, when to, like the chicken runs on defense, managing that it thinks it knows what everybody else is gonna do. So your chicken voice thinks it's a genius and is gonna help you not get in trouble ever with anyone, anywhere, right? Including yourself, mm -hmm. where you're scared and if you asked for what you wanted, you might, 
get a no, we hate no, we hate rejection. We're like you know, chickens. Yeah, and the weather reporter. The weather reporter is a more funky kind of concept. It's how we think of ourselves and life in weather reports. So a weather reporter is telling the truth, always. Like we always think we're telling the truth and it's not our fault. Is it the weather reporter's fault ever that it snowed when it said it was gonna rain? No, they did the best they could. So a human talks about themselves like a weather reporter. I've always been this way, I've never been that way, I've never been good at that. Oh, you know, right? So we talk about ourselves in these weather fronts mm -hmm. as if they're facts and we can't change them. Just like it's cold in Alaska, I'm not a morning person. I'm not, I'm an introvert. I'm a, like any I am and then fill in the blank and it's something that's not great for you or, or an absolute. The only absolute is I'm five foot three, yes. Right, but besides those, most ways people talk about themselves are weather reporters and it's really lies, manipulations of the self over time, lower self. Amazing, so I guess as you deepen your connection to your higher self, the plasticity, the changeability of all the smaller self stories and actualities are much more moldable and, and changeable, aren't they? I guess when we're so... They disappear. Disappear. We don't even... So the, there's a chart that I make in the book and how I do it, which is you have a subconscious down here. You have your, like, imagine subconscious and um, where you don't remember why you're thinking, like, this is your memories. This is what you feel. This Like, it's like, I don't know where that comes from, right? And then there's this line on the, you know, whatever that's called, the, right? 90 degree angle, this line, imagine is what you remember and are conscious to, right? And so if you go, my body is an 8.8, .8, right? I'm happy. Then the way you remember how you look and the way you are conscious, so what you're consciously doing and what your subconscious are doing, they meet at the point of an 8.8 .8 on a scale of one to 10. If you're a four, I just had a baby a year ago and I don't, you know, I have, I have to take care of the baby. I can't exercise. But why are you eating corn flakes, right? Like, and sugar, right? Like the way you relate to yourself is a four. The way your mind talks to you is a four. The way you remember the world is wrong is a four, right? The way the whole inner dialogue where conscious meets subconscious is a four. If you start taking all the right actions, you, the way you talk, the way you think, the way is an eight. We're not, we don't have to live in this continuum. Mm -hmm. We are allowed to live present and like who we are today and talk about our past like summer camp, right? Right, everything can be the past. It doesn't require, the reason it's not is because it still matters today as part of why you suck in the nicest way I can say that. And anything you remember, I'm like in an area you're great, you don't keep catalogs of all, like we do not keep, we keep unhappy catalogs. We do not keep happy catalogs mm -hmm. the way we keep unhappy catalogs. Yeah, <laughs> apparently that is like a, a, an old, old survival technique that's very outdated. I think the analogy I, I recall, it's like, um, the negative shit is like like velcro it just it just sticks and we think about it and we make it into something it isn't yet the positive stuff is like teflon it just slides on by and that that's a real it's in our biology apparently it is an actual survival technique to yeah. just keep hurtling in the, all that negative shit but really um i would call and then science says that over 80% of our thoughts are negative mm, yeah. and, and repeating from the day before. So you may, you may get out on that road and you may hate drivers and you think you're having an original hate day, but honest to God, it's the same repeat. It's repetition from the day before, just new, you know, little Barbies going by you, right? So to stop the negative inner dialogue, you have to even hear it to stop it, to take over, to, you know, literally make the toilet bowl go there. Mm -hmm. Swim up river, folks. Yeah, there's a pretty common 
tendency with a lot of this uh, positive life improvement movement for people to do kind of what you're talking about, have the dream, have the vision, but do the spiritual bypass thing and suppress all the negative shit. But it really does seem revolutionary how you're inviting and really, yeah, the, these really potent platforms to be really honest with our shit and our negative, negative stuff. It's fine. Um, I even think it's hysterical, delicious, and the only right. I think it's the opposite. Yes. Right. Like, Right. Which you is very, it. very helpful, you know, the light yeah. with the dark. And then we can really focus on the beauty and the vision and the intentionality and the negative shit's no such, no big deal. We don't need to avoid the, the So the band, right back to the band, yeah. right? The band was mortified that they had such secrets and gossip and everything they had never discussed. Right. And then when you keep a secret, it means something like you take that secret and you're like, I can't tell you cause you're going to yell at me. I can't tell you cause you're going to fire me. I can't tell you because you're crazy. And I think it's true, right? Like the list of when you keep a secret, how much it creates reality. So then everything you're hiding about yourself or others that's dark becomes more real and more worth hiding. And then it, that's, that's the epitome of the mind thinking right? It believes it knows something. And then if it can't say it, it becomes real. So what about, so what about like, okay, I've gotten that teaching and then I'm going to go out and just blurt my truths everywhere. Like you're fat, you're ugly, you're this, you're that. It's not that, is it? No, no. (laughs) Because I think it sometimes does get mistaken for that. Okay. Like I'm not going to hold anything back now and I'm just going to blurt my truth left, right and center. No. It's much more conscious than that, isn't it? When I, when I teach people how to talk, I go, you know, there's something really interesting about humans that they, and I put it this way, like every sentence would not be okay. If you didn't go, please pass me the salt, and you just said, give me the salt, I'd be a jerk, right? So the first part, will you please, right, is grace, and then the salt is the wisdom, Right. So I put those two together, grace and wisdom, every sentence, everything needs grace and wisdom. So you wouldn't say something unless you were trying to deliver it well. Right. It's it's not I think black is a terrible color. Right. You're like, okay, Right. Like that is unnecessary and it is not stopping me from being connected to you. Right. So when when push comes to shove, there really is a list of things you're hiding and going to the grave with or never resolved about. And everyone knows their list and it's finite. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the person who keeps talking about the diet and then orders French fries. Let's say we're sitting at that table with the person who talks about it, admires my body, discusses it. I order the salad and they order the French fries, right? And in that moment, it would be very brave of me to go, you know, what's up with that, right? You talk about it. You look at me. You're proud of me. And then you order the French fries. What do you want me to do in that situation? It puts me in my head and it's like, why do you do both sides, right? So I would only say that to someone I love because I want to know what's going on with them. Mm-hmm. So none of the conversations that are for the truth or for honesty and intimacy are taking out a bat and hitting someone with the truth. Yeah. That is the opposite point, right? If you don't like the person sitting across from you, I am not telling you to, to like let them know. Like, who hangs out with someone? Like, that's like, go to a restaurant you don't like? Why? Right? If you have to have a relationship with someone because they're coworkers, then you have to have a relationship with them. So then what do you want? Then have a dream. Now you have to deal with the upsets and all the things that don't work. Trust me, if you're mad at them, they're mad at you too. Right? So yeah. the odds that it's deep and intimate and that love is, is the posturing I'm talking about. hmm why do you think people get so uncomfortable telling the, telling the truth and hearing those deeper truths? Because we've never done it and we really don't do it. And it's like, it's very rare. Even a person who has their best friend, you and your best friend, like there may be the two of you that tell everything. 
that's not an example of a life that matches that, right? So most people have no experience in a life where they're fully known, all their secrets are out, mm -hmm. whether it's the, no matter who walks in the door. And so we have very little experience with how good it feels, right? Like, and how special it is and how much more we'll like ourselves and others. We just yeah. don't know. We don't know how. Another right. um, great line that I thought, a couple lines that I took note of that I absolutely loved. I mean, I could have done it all day, but I just took down a few. Being able to tell the truth about our own lack of personal integrity has integrity to it. Yes. The key to being able to deal with and lighten up about our own humanity is to get wholly honest about our dishonesty. That is really articulate and really powerful. So simple, yet really powerful in that. Being able to tell the truth about our own lack of personal integrity has integrity to it. Yeah. It's huge. Again, coming back to Ramdas, he often speaks about like the, the horny celibate that's like done this vow of celibacy, like, okay, uh, I'm all spiritual, I'm all holy. I'm never going to have sex again, and they, but they're still having sexual feelings and they're suppressing it and lying about it. And, and then they do a whole bunch of just gnarly, dark, absurd shit out of the just unhealthy, huge lie. So it's, it, he often speaks about someone that is being honest about their sexuality and their desires is much more holy than this phony, holy, horny celibate, you know? So that's, that's huge to just own it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, you know, AA has been saying if all the, all, everybody, it's like, this is, but how to get a person to do it. Right. Right. And how to walk a person through the steps to do it. Mm -hmm. um, can't be, I think it can't be alone. You need other people right? Like, uh, you need other people, you need a coach, you need other people, you have groups, you have like, and you have to want to go all the way, mm -hmm. right? To, and then you really need to understand that ending lying, like ending the right to lie to anyone um, is either something you've committed to or not, right? It is not something you're pretty good at, mm -hmm. right? And because we lie to ourselves, right? And Oh, that's fine, right? Like the amount of like, read an email, be mad or don't like what just got said and then go, I don't want to write the email back. Okay, fine, what do I want to, like, I don't want to, it's not a big deal, click. All, that was chicken dance and uh, martyr and who cares? And then I'll make up, well, they can't handle it anymore. And then I'll stick a brand on someone else rather than go, I'm a liar. Yeah. Right. I will so do you do you feel it's vital to have physical people such as yourself, coaches, psychologists, whatever it may be, yoga teachers, people that can physically walk us through? Because uh, I do know there are a lot of people that are getting the inspiration, the aha, from podcasts and from audiobooks and from books. Do you think that is good enough to have the aha and to hear and go, yeah, got it? And then have some, have some tools, but do you think in this day and age, we still need the physical people in our lives to help us through it? Well, first of all, so the program I, so in my, so I've been testing this. This is like, I'm like, I have proof. Okay. Right? And I didn't know the answer before this. Right. Right. So, you know, when I, I left leading big, like I did not think seminars were getting the job done. Because people could clap, people could smile, people could act like they were getting it, and then they, you know, went home to their mistress, right? And they could still justify it for whatever, right? Like it did not make the changes that are really required to go deeply inside out. And, and I'm a stickler about that. So, but here's what, but the artist way, like there are things that people can do together Right. And as long as there's an accountability buddy that really gets a, like every Tuesday for an hour, we'll do our homework, we'll put in a consequence. So the very method that I teach is online and you can get a buddy. So I do think 
it can be facilitated with someone who's not a coach. I do. I think yoga glow works if you do it right. Do I think being in a class pushes you harder? If there's other people there, it pushes you harder. A hundred percent. I just did the experiment of getting a Peloton. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was just doing one yesterday. Yeah. Okay. And, and I used to go to, and I go to Joyride, like there's a great place I love, right? And I got it to see if I would like save a half hour, save time, save money. Guess what? You don't I'm, use it. I'm sending it back. Like, right. I'm sending it back. I, I love the teacher. I love the yeah. people in the class. I like being with people. Mm-hmm. It makes me work twice as hard. And so when you go, can you do it alone? I'm like, I work twice as hard when someone's watching. Mm -hmm. No different than particles. (laughs) You know, like everything works better when there's an audience, right? So, sorry, I think we do need each other in that Yes, beautiful, thank you. What do you feel are the top three obstacles that get in the way of people really thriving? We've probably spoken to them, but off the top of your head right now, what are you observing as the top three obstacles um i am not impressed like i hunt and pump up and develop people's ambition Mm -hmm. for true greatness in all areas of your life not just money not like people can have one or two or three Mm -hmm. but i think there's 12 and and I and like what? Like that's it. That's what. That's all you're getting and giving to life, right? That's all you got, right? That's you ringing yourself out, right? For whatever it is. So I am. I want to push. Pe- so people don't have very high ambition of how great life should be, for real. And so then it drops all the standards everywhere. So I I like to raise standards and ambition. Yeah. And it's not about money and career. Like everyone hears ambition and they go straight to career. Why? Right? It could be about your sex life with your, like I want ambition in a marriage is sex life. Right? Like, yes, the place you've already gotten incredibly lazy. That's will be like, so I'm, I get very pissed at la- at laziness about dreaming for amb- like getting the most out of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess it's an easy cop-out that kind of takes us off the hook. And what is that? What is that? Complacency. Yeah. Acceptance. It's like acceptance, like, like acceptance, but it's really resignation. Yeah. Well, that comfort zone, it's, it is seductive. I know that comfort zone. There, there, there is something disgustingly comforting about it, but it's not really. But I, I get it. And I come from a long line of people that love the comfort zone. And I I remember a real peak moment of observing, observing my complacency and just seeing it, seeing it for what it is, not taking it personally and just going, oh, time to burst this bubble, this comfort zone bubble and, and, and reach higher, you know, but it was, it was uncomfortable. It's an uncomfortable, like, Ugh, like reaching out of that that complacency so i get i get why it's seductive to stay in it uh yeah i mean if i didn't demand it of myself every mm-hmm. year right like i have every year i have to make new dreams every year i have to grade the dreams i did this year mm-hmm. all year long i'm checking on how i'm doing right and if I have to do it, then I can make everybody else do it. That's pretty much how the brat really works. If I have to make promises, why don't you, right? If I need them, you do, right? So I, I love that. But the way, the way that um, the world really works, which is if you keep dreaming, you keep chasing them, you keep taking the right actions, mm-hmm. you'll get there. And then there's all these places people never get because they're not chasing them. And that's the rub, that's the rub, right? I see so much available for human potential. Like I 
coach. I, I just, I, I, I am in love with humans potential, but I am devastated by our, our missing ambition for that. Disguise as life is hard. Yeah. Which brings me to the hauntings that you speak of. Please elaborate on what you feel the hauntings are and how they sabotage our potential, how we buy into those hauntings. So, no, you know, I want people to get crazy fascinated by the list of memories you can't shake. The good ones and the bad ones. Even the good ones are brilliantly designed to show you something deeply insightful about yourself. And then the bad ones are places where you're locked. And the reason you, for all the things you could, there's plenty of shit that happened to all of us and we don't remember any of that. But the ones you do remember are, are critical and they hold a mass, right? And the mass that they hold in my book is a lesson, you, you learn the wrong lesson. There are lies in the story you still have in faith. There's a reason you can't get rid of that haunting. And it's haunting you because it wants you to figure out that there's something wrong with that interpretation you came up with. So something happens, we interpret it, that we all understand that. Many of those decisions we made shape the rest of our life, about our father, about our mother, about ourselves. And then once we've made a decision, it's a lot like one plus one is two. My father is a jerk, right? I can't talk to him about these kind of things, right? And then you go, how many times have you tried? Exactly. Once, 32 years ago. Great. You were 16. Maybe he was really not talking to you about that because you were 16. Now you're 50. What's your excuse, right? He's, you know, right? You could talk about sex with him now. Your parents are divorced, right? Like, what are you worried about? I think everybody gets it, right? So the amount that people keep old stories locked up, they keep relationships fixed, they keep their relationship fixed also to themselves and others because they won't go back and investigate that haunting. It isn't that the haunting isn't sitting right there waiting for me to pick it up like a ball and go, okay, well, at least we know where we need to unravel this to set you free. This is where all the, conver like if we have these conversations with your dad, right? Oh, we have to forgive him. You never forgave him. He doesn't even know you're mad. Like, so it's the haunting memories are perfectly connected to why your 12 areas of life look exactly the way they look, along with your parent traits, like how you hold the whole thing. And by the time I'm done in that first session with you or the first module, and you've done all that work, you figure out that's your lower self. The hauntings, the way you talk about yourself, the way your inner dialogue works, and the way your personality works is all connected. And that's what we're blowing up in the name of dreams and what's possible. And no, you're not fixed. Nope. Yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> quite haunting. <laughs> and they're really... They're, they're really not. beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah. They're beautiful. They're begging you to come back. It's mm. like, um, you know, it's, you know, it's like a, in the, I'm Jewish, so you can hear a Jewish line. But I am like, as well, so. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, so, the, you know, the, an unexamined dream, like a dream at night, an unexamined dream is like not opening a letter from a loved one. Mm -hmm. Right? right? Like a note from God is kind of a, right? Like something important. And your haunting memories are the same thing to me. They, you're, there are, they, they explain the traps you're in and what you haven't resolved, which explains why you can't get past invisible ceilings that you think are stopping you, which is all beliefs you have about yourself. Your beliefs come from your hauntings. Many of them. Massive. Let's also talk a little bit about our tendency to want to change others before we change, whether it be, right. our, whether it be with our lover or whoever, but most commonly with our lover, like yes. that drama of needing them to change. Right. 
<laughs> what, is, what is that all about? Uh, you first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me get this straight. Let me get the choice. Okay. I could stay home, lay in bed, you'll cook dinner, you'll take care of the kids, and you'll think I'm the greatest person on earth. Right? Like, if you did it all, I'd be great. Right? If you fixed it, I'll go next. If you were, if you said this, then I'd say that. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to figure out what everybody else should do better, and then you. We're, we're the assholes. Mm -hmm. Right? So I could tell you everything you're doing wrong. Right? Then I don't have to pay any attention to me. Though everyone will then say, I can still tell you everything you're doing wrong. But if you heard the voice in my head, it's so mean to me. Obviously, I do it, I do it to me too. Right? We're just never communicating in a way that makes a difference, right? So even with your husband or your wife, right? How to say something or negotiate, right? We've just, we just stuff it, we leak. We're, we're not great at communicating. No one, like where was that school for great intimacy with your life partner? We need it. I, I, my next program that I'm coming out with that I already recorded, so I've inner you, but the one that I'm so proud of besides like my basics, the book is all my content, inner you is all my content, but the three H's, which is your head, your heart, and your hoo-ha and all the, all connect, like all love language and how to connect in my kind of street form to how to have awkward conversations all about sex, all about intimacy, all about everything that no one wants to talk about. It's coming. Yeah, that's coming. great. When is it coming? When is it's it coming? coming? It's coming in January. Cool. It's yeah, exciting. No yeah, oh my God. Oh my God. And got like, it is not for the fainted heart, right? Like mm -hmm. I am talking about everything that right. no one wants to talk about. All forms of sex, masturbation, rot, like everything anybody's ever like taken to the grave. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, that can be applied to the macrocosm as, as well, like waiting, waiting for our leaders, waiting for the world to change, playing that whole drama, which has a lot of relative truth. Mm -hmm. But the more we all become empowered and confident and in the flow, that has a ripple effect that's un undeniable. So for, yeah. we could also be sitting around waiting for the world to change before we become happy and empowered and play that card, which is pretty common. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, it's devastating, <laughs> right? Like, right. Um, yeah. So I really do blame. If you're like, Lauren, who do you blame? I'm like... Mm. I blame the lack of leadership. Right. Like I want everyone to stand up and fight for anything. I'll take anything. Yeah. Right. Like, I'll take. And then my other line that I hate to be true is um, the good guys, the really good guys are so busy being humble rather than like, my name is Prince. Mm -hmm. Right. And ambitious and crazy. Right, like the dark side has no problem thinking they deserve. It's the good guys that are not nearly as insane as the bad guys, right? True. Like dark has so much more power than light and light is so wimpy, right? Versus big and mouths yelling, doing something about it today. Yeah, right? that's a good so, point. Yeah, we're, it's like, a, it was like the, sorry everyone, if you, if you like Donald Trump, you can imagine I don't. Right. So and I'm like, we're so screwed. Why? I'm like, there's no Democrat who's going to shoot them. Oh, they'll shoot the Kennedys. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll shoot any of the good guy. Like the wrong team will shoot them. Right. If it was the other way around. Yeah. Right. I, we just don't do that. Mm -hmm. And it's not really helping. It's not. We're too nice. We're too nice. <laughs> we're like, everybody right right breathe right like we and we mean it but but we you know it was so i here's a terrible idea ready have you want a funny terrible idea please okay so this is like where i think the state of the union is right i'm like i know what will fix things if there was a porn site that gave 15 percent 
of all its earnings to the environment. <laughs> I think man would click on that one if it was the same price. Sure. I'm like, that's where the human race is right now. Wow. We have to go to where we are and help from there rather than pretend that the elite, right? We, we're like not working where it is. Yeah, that's a new one for me. That's a new concept. <laughs> I think it's got some juice to it. I know. I, I'm, I like come up with jokes so I can hear <laughs> how to be okay with how far away I think we are from taking care of human, ourselves in a way that we all deserve. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there is a classic tendency to, if one is on the spiritual path, to lean too far into the light to be into the light and even that can become pathological and dysfunctional and lack grounded action so it seems pretty apparent that a lot of what you're doing is really to embody equal light and dark right and become more easeful and playful and empowered with the dark aspects of our humanity as well which probably enables you to have a bit of a laugh about it as well, even though there's a lot of shit going on, you know? Yeah. I think that that's where I, like, I think that's my lane, mm -hmm. is make the dark funny. And like, the more you can talk about, I don't, you know, I need a promise to play with my kids. You're like, that's terrible. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, but I do, right? Monopoly is not my thing, right? I could have a good time, but you'd like sit down for two hours on a board game, <laughs> right? You don't think going and getting a manicure is hanging out with my kid, right? So that's telling on myself. And mm -hmm. then if I make that promise, I'm growing up my dark side who's selfish and self-centered and just wants to do whatever the hell I want to do. Right. And that's disgusting because that I would never want a mommy like that. Mm. But I'm but that's my nature. Right. And so I kick my nature's ass. Right. No different than do I want an apple or a muffin if they both were going to, you know, not make me fat. Right. Or unhealthy. You know what I mean? Like muffin. Right. Like so I understand the reaching for the gold instead of the coal. Mm -hmm. right and so there's this way we don't own our dark side so we can fix it right so then we really are exhausted which is why we can't play with our kids right so it's just as dark we're just not clear about it mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. lauren yeah. this has been super inspiring and really refreshing it's Super refreshing hearing your wisdom and your, your humor. And thank you so much. Is there anything you want to let the listeners know about? Or the watchers? Um, ambition comes from big promises that you mean with actions and that you tell someone that you're going to do that. It isn't, about, it isn't about succeeding. It's about the chase, people. And it's the only way you can succeed. So if you don't have big promises for next year, if you haven't thought about what they, and it has nothing to do with what happened this year, I can turn a person's life around in three weeks and results can change. It's it just, no one's stuck anywhere, ever. It's just not true. Yeah. You are great. We're, we're crazy great. Amazing, Lauren. Well, love you, love your work. Thank you so much. Really great to connect. I hope to do it again. Yes, please. Yeah. And keep doing what you're doing because boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy, do we need it. Much Thank love, you. Lauren. All the best. Bye. Bye for now. Bye.